as you can see in this video, I am trying out air dry clay for the first time. Now for a little backstory with me, when I was little, I used to love modeling clay. And when I went to co-op, I was homeschooled. So when I went to co-op, we did a clay works thing where I played with the clay and the lady would keep it, put it in her kiln and then we paint it with whatever her special paint was and then she put it in her kiln. Um, I used to make like little Monsters Incorporated clay little things and stuff when I was little. I have tried air dry clay, but it was terrible. And it didn't dry right, it fell apart, it was very chalky. It was 10 pounds for $10 at Hobby Lobby. It was the cheapest stuff I could find, and it acted cheap, so I never got to actually enjoy it. But this is Sculpey Air Dry Clay. I bought it at Walmart between 6 or $8. I don't know, but it's 2.2 pounds. And the sensory experience of squishing this clay, I don't know if it's the texture or what, it's absolutely therapeutic for me, and I love it. So... As you see, the beginning of this video is live stream footage. I was originally going to upload the live stream, but then I figured I'd rather make like a whole video of my thoughts and my experience on it instead. Maybe for people who want to try it too, but don't know where to get started. This is a beginner to a beginner. So what you're seeing me do for the past like minute or two is I'm drawing out the shapes I want to use to cut out the clay. Now. I saw this on a couple of videos on how to use air dry clay for pins and stuff. So this is not my idea, but it helps a lot. You'll have to like smooth it out and stuff after you cut it, but it does help a lot. So my ending ones ended up being two different mushrooms, a cat, a bunny, and a sunflower. The sunflower has two parts. I want to see how it would be to do 3D magnets, because all of these were magnets, not pins. I like 3D, but once you glue it, it's there, so you better be sure what you're doing. Um, I would say about the Sculpey clay, it is very, very good. It stays moist pretty pretty well. It's very easy to clean up. It takes a while to dry. It takes at least a day or two to be hard hard, but it always stays has a little like play to it. But I don't know if that's just because it's air dry and not baked clay. I don't know. I never use polymer clay. It costs too much. That's why I'm doing the air dry. say if you want to try out this air dry clay it is definitely worth it it takes the paint really well um, it dries hard enough once you put like paint and sealant on it it's it, it's it's durable I wouldn't like smash it on the floor but it's durable um, I put resin on it so it becomes very durable after that because resin is basically like a I don't know what it's actually supposed to be, but it feels kind of like a ceramic covering, even though that's not what it is. Um, it's affordable. Like I said, it was six to eight dollars for over two pounds, so you can get a lot out of it. I would say if you're gonna like sculpt like a figure or something, don't do it out of pure clay. You'll use all your clay. Do like armature wire and foil and stuff first. Um, for what I'm using it for, I think it works fine. 
Also, if you're doing clay, make sure you have some water on hand to smooth it out. Like, you don't want your hand soaked. Just lightly tap your finger in the water just to s s smooth it out. You don't need a lot of water to get it to smooth out. Just very lightly. Also, I would not use a cotton swab. I feel like it might just rub too much off. You want your finger. Or like a tool specifically made to smooth it out. Also keep in mind that because this is air dry clay and it is a little more delicate, um, don't make anything too thin because it can easily snap. Make it a little thicker so that way it is more durable. I don't know exact sizes within centimeters or inches or any of that, but just you don't want it paper thin. It will definitely snap. Like you want it like visibly thick, but not too thick. You'll see as I'm sculpting how big I made it, make it about that thick, maybe a little thicker because I am still learning. Also keep in mind, as smooth as it is, it is a good idea to sand it. I do not know grades of sandpaper, I just know that I picked one that looked like it wasn't too rough and I smoothed it out a little bit before I painted it. It does help. Also, it does have a bit of a texture to it, so you could theoretically sketch on it first before you paint it in. But when I made my diagrams, I drew the whole picture on it so I would see what I wanted it to look like, only without color. And that helped me a lot trying to paint it. Also keep in mind that you will be using a paint that doesn't dry immediately, so if you're using acrylic, acrylic gouache, some people use gouache, I don't know how they do it without it coming up, but some people do use gouache. Poster paint. Pasca pens, those take a lot longer to dry than watercolor unless like you stop the watercolor in water. So be careful to not mix and smudge your colors. I did that on one of them and I had to keep fixing it. Also, if you paint all the details in, remember to use a fine tip brush. And if you have Pasca pens, that could really help. I don't have many Pasca pens, so I didn't use that. Also, if you use matte textured craft paint sometimes that's a little chalky in texture test it out sometimes you can use colored pencils on top of it but it does depend if it's glossy that won't work i noticed like matte apple barrel paints tend to be pretty cool with having color pencil on top of it so that could be an option too you probably should prime it but i didn't prime it and it came out just fine but a lot of people do recommend primer just remember if you use a primer try and use a matte one so you can still sketch on top because a glossy primer will not work out for sketching. I just use a white craft paint as a primer. You don't need to go and buy gesso or anything expensive. You can just use whatever you have.
also highly suggest sealing this with resin. You can use Mod Podge, but Mod Podge yellows over time and it can peel off and it can still get scratched up. Resin has like a hard, almost ceramic feel to it, so it won't come up as easily. You don't have to, but it's a good idea. I use UV resin and I put it under a nail lamp and that's how I do it, but you can do whatever you want. Also, don't forget to do the sides. If you want to do the top first and then the sides, that's fine, because multiple layers is fine for it anyway. It doesn't get as foggy looking as Mod Podge does with multiple layers. I've seen people also resin the back, so that would probably be a good idea if you put a pin backing on it. Put the pin backing on first and then resin it, because that'll add an extra security to the pin backing. I used magnets, so I just used some jewelry glue and glued it on there. Even though it has an adhesive, I figured I want it really secure because I don't want them to break if they fall. So I used some really heavy duty jewelry glue. Don't screw with it. It like feels like a callus on your hand. It dries in seconds. So whatever you put there is stuck. Overall, I would say my experience was good. Painting on it was... I don't know what it is. Like there's something about painting on the clay, the texture, the feel. It brings out all of the serotonin. I don't know what it is, but I really enjoy it. I would definitely recommend it for like a relaxing activity. I would say in conclusion, it is definitely worth the money. You can also do this very cheap. Um, my Walmart personally has apple barrel paint for 50 cents each. So just get like 10 colors because you can still mix more with those colors. And that's five dollars and then get the clay which is six to eight so for under fifteen dollars you can make all kinds of clay things the magnets i think too are like a dollar dollar fifty so literally under fifteen dollars you can make your own custom clay magnets the resin will add a little bit of expense if you want to resin it but if you want to just put mod podge that's another dollar resin is kind of expensive it's like twenty dollars for like a two ounce bottle but a tiny bit goes a long way, and if you use a Michael's um, coupon, you can get it for like 50, 40, 50% off, and that saves you a lot of money. That's what I did. So yeah, if you want to try this out, I would definitely recommend it. I'm going to be doing more of it. I'm hoping to have more of it on the channel because I actually am really enjoying myself. It's something different. And it combines drawing, sculpting, and painting all in one activity, which for me is great because I like doing multiple things. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you everyone for watching until the end. I hope you all enjoyed. And also just a reminder that the beginning of this was done on Twitch. I do art and game streams on there. I've been doing them Tuesdays in the afternoon for art and in the evening I've been doing video games. If you missed the live streams for video games, I'm pretty much playing through games on there and I'm recording it and then I'm editing it, all the like the pauses and stuff, you might miss them sometimes. And I'm putting on my video game channel, which should always be linked in the description. If not, I need to fix that. And you can go over there and subscribe to that and you will get notifications if you turn on all notifications to see my playthroughs there. I hope you all have a great day and I hope you all enjoyed this video and please like and comment and all that fun stuff. And if you could subscribe, that would be great. Yep, thank you everyone for watching. Have a great day. Bye. So here's what I came up with. I'm going to catch the light. Let me open the blinds. So here's what I came up with. There we go. It's hard to get the air bubbles out. I don't know how to do that. I tried.